a number of people already started conversations, a number of people who are actually most of you already feel like you're ready to have a conversation. We could have a sense of what would the first meeting look like and what, what are some roles that we should be expecting so it doesn't feel like we have to know everything when we go and share this with people because you don't. Just give you an anecdote. I, I brought a battery to a member who got their power shut off because of inability to pay. And when I drop off the battery and show them how to use it, they looked at me and they're like, are you a superhero? How do you know so much? Are you an engineer? And I, I, I was able to say, I'm neither. I'm definitely not an engineer. I simply learned this because I'm doing this work with other people who know these things. And so we get to learn with each other and and move forward so you don't have to know a lot the more you're in it with the people who know things that you don't the more we can move together practicing our elevator speech yeah, okay mm -hmm. write a draft poll to tool library membership so i can have a specific question yeah okay yeah that sounds good okay. we should come up with some some alluring questions what are your plans if the power goes out just something simple like that to the person that you're grocery shopping next to or someone that you already know um, or a community that you're already part of. So a lot of times people have that community, I think uh, like a faith-based community or something of that nature where I go to church every Sunday, this is my church. Great, invite your church in, look around and hey, this, this church doesn't have like solar. The churches are communal spaces. Like when there are disasters and if the church is still standing, like I know a lot of times they say schools, like people go to schools because they're built for... Um, a little bit more resilient usually than churches, but that's still a communal place where people can meet. Um, you can have backup battery there. You can have um, solar power so people can stay there warm and so forth. But those conversations, again, need to happen prior to the disaster happening. So if you're already part of a community, elevator pitches, you know, go to your pastor, go to whoever's the, the deacon at the church, whoever's the the leader in that community and, and talk to them and say, hey, look, I noticed that we don't have a plan for when the power goes out. And we have an organ. Like, how are we going to play the organ? There's uh, no plan for power. But that's just a, an example of, of different ways. But we can get into more of that next week to Crystal's point. Yeah, I, it, it feels since so many people are pretty feeling pretty ready and either have started conversations or are ready to start conversations, it might be a really great place for the next week to either put a poll out to your community or to just have conversations and then bring the questions back so then you can either invite your people to come to this call or mm -hmm. learn about anything that you might have and bring it back or any questions or answers you might have and bring it back to your community and then we can come back again in our final session. For those people who still feel like it'll be good to have a elevator pitch i think it might be a good idea for you to pitch it to the people who are closest to you to just mention hey this is what it feels like this is what i'm learning what i've been learning for the past six weeks thinking about doing something like this and then see the reaction and then try it out with another person now you can go out to your neighbor or to your any kind of community that you're connected to to have that conversation and so when we come together in a week we can see what feels right, what doesn't feel right. What are some reaction that you're getting? We're engaging. And again, you do not have to feel like you're an organizer. Maybe you're already an amazing organizer, but you don't have to be an organizer to just plant a seed to people. Right now, all of what we're doing here is planting seeds of an idea. And maybe you're planting seed of an idea as an organizer. And you're going to start organizing people. Or maybe you're just planting seed of an idea so that you can find all the right people so that we can thrive together as a team. We'll just spend the next seven days to reach out to folks, either with my close circle to practice talking about what this idea is, to pulling a poll out to the community, inviting the community over to ask some questions, and then we'll meet up again next week to see what type of questions we have. In doing the homework, I saw all the great little templates for the signups and community agreements and register to organize your collectives is there an optimum number of 
batteries you might have to serve numbers of households in your collectives like right one battery 50 homes or one battery 10 homes is there a, a, a rule of thumb for some sustainable resilient number ratio it really depends on the needs if you have 10 households we need to charge 10 refrigerators it's probably a lot harder to move 10 refrigerators to one battery but if you have 10 cell phones it's a lot easier to bring it to one place so it really depends on the needs wheelchair depends on the needs air filter fan all these things it really depends so the most important thing is to just get in the community and try to think about what the needs are and what the relationship looks like it's like nick said in chat that everything is all about the relationship and all the infrastructure pieces will come into place once you start to be with the people. Yeah. In general, you'll start with your needs. So you'll come to whatever community that you're building or joining. You'll already know what your needs are. So you're going to come into that community. And as you guys discuss an open conversation, you're going to start talking about, oh, yes, I have a refrigerator in this. And someone else is going to say, great, I have a refrigerator too. Great. In an event of emergency, we're both going to share refrigerators. Yeah, no problem. Two other people, great, we can fit a lot of stuff in this refrigerator, no problem. So then that changes now to this is what we need to support because we only need to support one refrigerator versus four. So the wanting to have four, now you realize, and you guys through community have talked about it and you guys discussed, since we all live in the same building, I can come up two floors to grab my, my cucumbers or whatever needs to be refrigerated. Actually, cucumbers don't need to be refrigerated. Milk, sorry. <laughs> it's not a big deal, which is why when we're designing this program, we can't give antidotes for everything. We can try to, again, explain to people how to fish, and then the people can take that information and try to transfer it to their individual communities to say, this makes sense for us. This makes sense for us. And then come up with the solutions for your community. Yeah, and we've already seen, right? Oh, Everyone's come up with their own way and their own approach, either tapping into national movements about next month about emergency backup preparedness or whether it's starting a tool shed library it's all really dependent on what group you're really in and what you're as we said what the wants and needs are but yeah again just collectively coming together and listening you can get a lot more ideas about how like we've heard a whole bunch of creative responses to questions today and yeah, we hope to do more and hopefully help you guys build a community to do that yourselves. We've been so grateful that you decide to spend an hour of your busy day on every Tuesday to come together to brainstorm and collectively problem solve together for each of us to have these community-based solutions, which then start changing the culture. So for the next week, we all committed to engaging with our community in some way, either by practicing how you talk about it before you reach out to your community or directly reaching out to the community because like just keeping, I'm just keep looking at the sea turtle. We just got to swim. Like the coordination between the arms and the legs and my head and my neck and my back is going to be weird, but I can only figure it out when I can get in the water. Thank you all so much for being in this with us and bring the tenderness and the love, fierce love for the space because this is hard stuff that we're all trying to figure out how we can move in a way that's different from the way that our culture is. But this is the way that our ancestors have been doing this for millennia. And we're just remembering how our body works. That's all based in love and each other. So we got us. Thank you all.